Hi students, I was going to try and avoid uh, too many of these this weekend. Uh, my voice is still recovering from the origin. Very disappointing result, I have to say. But I thought your learning takes priority, so we've got to make sure we catch up on a couple of these so you're ready to go for our last week of school next week. So let's get back into the preliminary chemistry video series. And this is uh, number seven in the water series on some of the physical properties of water. Now we have already looked at this before, so I just want to try and see if we can link what we understand about intermolecular forces with some of the important physical properties uh, that we notice for water. So first of all, we know that there are forces of attraction between different molecules. We know that these forces of attraction tend to be weaker than chemical bonds and they exist between the uh, molecules. And these Forces of attraction actually affect the physical properties of the substances. The most important thing about water is that it is a polar molecule. The hydrogen-oxygen bonds are polar. There is a slight positivity on the hydrogen side and a slight negativity on the oxygen side. Same for the other bond. And as a result, they sum together to create a polarity, a negative region and a positive region. Contributing to this is the fact that there are four unbonded electrons or lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen molecule. You have a very strong dipole. And as a result, this is a polar molecule. And so when we discuss the properties of water, we discuss it in relation to this polarity. So the first thing we look at is the state changes. So that is melting point and boiling point where we're going from a solid into a liquid or from a liquid into a gas. And why does this happen and why is it sometimes high and sometimes low? Well, if the molecule is something where the electronegativity difference between the two atoms is zero, as it would be for oxygen, then there is no polarity. The electrons are held just as tightly by either atom and they oscillate effectively between these two. And as a consequence, the Dipoles that are set up are, oops, they're not that positive, uh, are temporary. Okay, so these are temporary dipoles. And all the temporary dipoles do is create a force of attraction which is called a dispersion force. And it's the weakest of the intermolecular forces. And as a result of that, we don't need much energy to move these molecules apart from one another, so their melting and boiling points are low. Contrast that with the polarity of water molecules, where we have our O and our H, and then another H and an O. And the attraction between these two here is a particular type of dipole-dipole interaction called a hydrogen bond. This is very strong, and it results in higher melting and boiling points. Surface tension is something we had a look at during the practical activity that you recently completed. And the water molecules at the surface of the water body are the ones that are the influential or significant when we're talking about surface tension. So molecules at the surface of the water are attracted to adjacent water molecules. So we'll consider this one molecule. Here's another molecule here. Here's another molecule here. So there's a force of attraction um, to both of these molecules. There are also forces of attraction um, to molecules below, sitting in the water column below that molecule. So the equal force distribution around the water molecule pulls it downwards and sideways. So there is a, a level of sort of a drop, if you like, an overall unbalanced force um, because there's nothing pulling it up. So this is why you find that there is a little bit of a tension. Think about it kind of like uh, the surface of a trampoline. There's a little bit of give in that surface and that is surface tension. The consequence of surface tension is that there is uh, an ability to support the weight of, of light objects. And this can include certain types of animals like our little gecko over here, who you can actually see in this region has bent the surface of the water without actually breaking the surface. So he can sit happily on the surface of the water uh, and in fact move across it without breaking the surface tension and without falling through. If I tried to do that, I'm too massive, and I would just drop straight through the surface. Now, that could overcome that if I could run across the surface quickly enough, and we know that there's certain types of lizards that can 
move across the surface of water because their speed compared to this uh, mass is sufficient for them to not um, force all of their mass down through the surface of the water, but um, that's obviously not something that happens commonly. And it's partly this direct relationship between the tension at the surface and the strength of the intermolecular forces are acting on those individual water molecules, pulling them either way. So this hydrogen bonding that we talked about before is also a contributor to high surface tension, which is what we see in water. And the last and important um, property that we want to just quickly look at is viscosity. And again, we looked at this in a recent experiment. And this is about um, how liquids flow. Specifically, viscosity is the resistance of a liquid to flow. So therefore, something which resists the flow um, or sticks together better, like something like honey, um, has a higher viscosity. So its viscosity is higher than water. And you looked at glycerol in your experiment, and it too has a high viscosity. It's very, uh, very viscous. That's, a, that's the term we want you to use. Very viscous. It holds together. It doesn't pour easily. It hangs um, tightly together. If a liquid's going to flow, two things need to be considered. Firstly, the molecules need to slide easily past one another for flow to happen. So therefore, if they're very big, they're going to be resistant to movement um, because there's going to be a lot of surfaces of attraction between those big molecules. But also, the actual um, intermolecular forces themselves, how strong they are, is also going to affect how well they stick together. So we can look at that in just a little bit more detail. Large molecules are more likely to have high viscosity because they, being large, there is a greater interaction between two adjacent molecules. So if there's a long molecule here and a long molecule here, even if the forces between them are only dispersion forces, there's so many of them that there's still a resistance um, for one, say, to go this direction and one to go this direction. So for this to slide past this one and flow, um, there's a lot of uh, forces here, even if those forces are weak. But strong intermolecular forces also create um, some drag, some resistance to flow. And that's a consequence, again, of the fact that the um, molecules hold so we still have uh, two molecules, but now these forces between them are reinforced. So even if they're smaller, these forces are much stronger and therefore the flow from one away from the other um, is more resistant and is higher. So what we do with water is we explain that even though it's a small molecule and therefore that would usually correlate with a lower viscosity, because of this very strong hydrogen bonding between the molecules, it has a relatively high viscosity, a high flow. Um, in comparison with other molecules of a similar size. Thanks for watching.